let's see. I want to make sure my sound's up because sometimes I hope that's good enough. All right. Hi, uh, this is David Kramer uh, from uh, Kramer Unstuck. And today, make sure this is right. Okay. Today, I want to talk about the Sabbath. Uh, there, there's people out there that will tell you that you need to go worship on, on the Sabbath. You know, and this is going to be a short video. I'm not going to go in depth on this. I'm going to go through some uh, exceptions to uh, what the commandment actually says that are in the Bible. But there are people that tell you you need to worship on uh, the Saturday because you know, that's the, the uh, commandment. Um, and that's nonsense. I've even seen uh, organizations like Billy Graham organization, which I have a lot of problems with Billy Graham and, and what he did, some of the stuff that just does not add up. But they'll tell you that it's for rest and worship. Well, here's the commandment. Okay, and I believe it's the seventh. Is it the seventh commandment? I'm not sure. You know, I may be, I may be, <laughs> I may be off there. But it says, okay, uh, Leviticus 23, 3. Six days, let me get this. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Okay? Nowhere in here. Now let's go to four. Let's see if, uh, I mean, I haven't been back in this part of the Bible for a while, but let's, uh, let's see what four says. Okay. Okay, this says these are the feasts, even holy convocations. Okay, I'm going to go up to one, and I want to see that because all right. Well, the seventh day. Okay, the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. That's it. Seven days, six days you work, and on the seventh day you rest. Okay, now. There's nothing there about doing anything. I know in Leviticus it talks about how you need to gather sticks and you need to gather, you, well, you gather enough manna so that you can go and bake enough food, cakes, so that you will have enough for the Sabbath. So you will not even get up and light a fire. Okay? You will get up and the work you'll do is pretty much you will get your food, you will eat it, and that's it. You get up to get the food. Where people will tell you, you need to go to church. You need to worship. Okay? And these people, okay, now they may get up and not do anything. But, say they don't, they don't get food. Say they have their food made. Okay? They got their food made, so they eat their food, and then they go outside, they get in their vehicle, they drive to their church, they get out of their vehicle, they go in their church, and they sit down in the pew, and then, of course, you have the, you know, standing up and sitting down and reading the Bible and going through all of these works. And then you get up at the end, and then you get in your vehicle, and then you drive home, and you go inside, and you're, you're doing all these works. You may get up in the morning and you decide you're going to brush your teeth. You're going to wash your face. Then you're going to make breakfast because you didn't have your food made the day before. These are all works. The Sabbath is specifically for rest. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I got Wikipedia here, which, you know, whatever. But... There's the ancient understanding. There are, uh, let's see, exceptions to this rule. 
okay and i'm just going to say okay this is the torah portrays the sabbath concept both in terms of resting on the seventh day and allowing land to be fallow during each seventh year the motivation is described as going beyond a sign in remembrance of yahweh's original rest during the creation week six days of creation the seventh he rested and extends to a concern that one's servants family livestock be able to rest and be refreshed from their work in addition to the instructions to the rest to rest on each seventh day and seventh year periods of seven days are often relevant aspects of biblical instruction for example the quarantine okay the quarantine period for suspected skin diseases after initial examination by a priest was seven days after which the priest would re-examine the skin and pronounce the person clean or unclean okay now that's a quarantine period so that could happen say on a wednesday where it starts and then the next wednesday they would examine it so on the sabbath you'd be resting but if it happened on a sabbath that'd be sabbath to sabbath so there would be an exception there okay uh the day all right after an initial examination by a priest for seven days after which a priest would re-examine the skin and pronounce the person clean or unclean. Other special days include the day after the seventh Sabbath, the first day of the seventh month, that the day of ritual cleansing after being healed from an unclean disease or other event bringing uncleanness. In addition, in the Battle of Jericho, Joshua commanded the army to march around Jericho each day for seven consecutive days and to march around Jericho seven times on the seventh day. So if that, seven day, that seventh day was a Sabbath, then they actually did all that work because then they also had to blow the trumpets and they had to shout, and then the walls came down, then boom, they went in and, uh, you know, it was, it was work. So it was a, this is essential, so we, we do it like that. Uh, let's see, let's go down here to another one. Uh, uh, okay, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Jehoiada, the priest, who organized a palace coup on the Sabbath in order to remove Queen Ataliah from the throne and replace her with Joash, the rightful heir to the throne. Ataliah had murdered all the heirs, other heirs to the throne upon the death of Ahaziah and usurped the throne of Judah for herself. Jehoiada's wife had rescued young Joash, and Jehoiada had kept him hidden for six years while Ataliah reigned as queen over Judah. Okay, you also have six, six, I don't know if that was in the sixth year or this was the seventh year, but there you kind of have a six, seven. Uh, the priest Jehoiada used the occasion of the transfer of the guard on the Sabbath to proclaim Joash as king because at that time he could arrange twice a normal guard on duty at the temple of Yahweh. On that day, a covenant was made. Joash was proclaimed king. Ataliah was put to death. The temple of Baal was torn down. Idols were smashed. And Matan, the priest of Baal, was killed. Uh, now, a number of the prophets condemned desecration of the Sabbath with various forms of work, including Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Amos. According to Nehemiah, after uh, captives returned to Jerusalem from exile, they made a covenant which includes a promise to refrain from desecrating the Sabbath. Yet some give in to the ongoing temptation to buy and sell on the Sabbath. As a result, Nehemiah has to rebuke them and station guards to prevent commerce in Jerusalem on the Sabbath. So there were exceptions to the rule if there was a necessity. Otherwise, no work at all. Meaning, don't get up and go out and your, make your food, brush your teeth, etc. I, you know, it, because then it, it, and it, and here's the thing, it's from sundown to sundown. So if sundown is six o'clock to sundown, now after that on Saturday, you can, uh, you know, do your face washing and stuff like that. But from uh, sundown on Friday to sundown on uh, Saturday, you know, so I, I that's why I said Saturday because it's like the majority of the time would be 
there'd be a six hour period on Friday and a, let's see, uh, 18 hour period on Saturday. So it's mostly Saturday. But if you're getting up, if you're telling other people they need to worship and they need to observe the Sabbath and you're doing any work on the Sabbath, you're not obeying it either. Okay? You know, read 23.3 and ask yourself if you're observing it correctly. And until next time, I'm David Kramer.